Hello YouTube, how the heck are you doing? Jail Bait here with another episode of Star Drive 2. Playing as the Draylock Council. Our merchants and spies are doing quite well, although we may be on the doorstep of war with the Volfar Empire. Uh, mostly because the jerks, you can see their approval rating is way low. And most of that is because they think that we have a planet that uh, should be theirs. Um, I, of course, disagree, considering that I colonized it. So, uh, we do have <clears throat> a bit of a pirate fleet on its way to Etho, but because we have a star base there, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, so, no worries. Also, um due to, shall we say, popular demand, uh, I am going to uh, basically try to set my videos to be around half an hour. Um, so with 30 minutes scheduled plus a little extra, it should be anywhere from 30 to probably 35 minutes long. That seemed to be what people were asking for, so that's what I'm going to give them. Anyways, we have... Our trade is nil, so um, it's. I think it's because. Why is that? Oh, our trade with the polyps ended. Our trade with the Volfar ended. So, with the polyps. Hello, polyps. Uh, we do have a bit of an issue with tolerance. Um. So we may need to wait a few turns to let that kind of die down as it is. Uh, we could probably only, yeah, if possible, get a small trade right going with them. And so I think it's better to wait a few turns, let that co cool down a bit, and then get one of the larger uh, trade agreements. Um, with the Volfar... I don't know. Trade with them could be risky, mostly because a trade agreement is 50 turns long, and if we go to war with them within the next little bit, I'm sure that cancels trade. Um, and so I want to deal with this threat before uh, we have any issues. Okay. So, we've got this pirate, Schmo, coming in. We have our little screener, which is just really not all that great, guys. <laughs> uh, if we look at the, his weapons, it's basically all point defense lasers and flat cannons. So, I don't know how effective it's going to be. On the flip side, they're the same class, and we've got this guy, so what I'm going to do is pull him back for now, and we will let the star base kind of do its damage. And it doesn't look like it's in very accurate to begin with. Ooh. To the wing, to the wing. Still can't see its. There we go. So the front of it's taking quite a beating, and. Yeah. Send it in. Oh. Nothing. So it didn't even fire. I don't know. I don't know if those point defense just won't fire at a ship. If they'll only fire at, you know, missiles and fighters and stuff. If that's the case, those screeners are going to be very not good by themselves. 
War hot cabal. Certain factions within your empire have become convinced that the Volfar Imperium is secretly plotting to destroy our empire. Well, I'm one of them. Whether or not this is true, the movement has gained strong support amongst the, a cabal of individuals who possess great personal wealth. Our sources indicate that this cabal has begun construction of a private war fleet that it intends to use to gain concessions from the government. The cabal has approached us with an offer. If we declare war on the Volfer Imperium, then they will donate 500 BC to our imperial coffers and stand down their own efforts. Otherwise, they are threatening to seize control of the government with their fleet within 15 turns. We have a couple of options. We could simply declare war on the Volfar Imperium and collect a hefty amount of cash to help fund the efforts. Alternatively, we could reject the Cabal's advances, but it is very likely that we'll have to face their fleet in short order. What should we do? Um, we will not allow the wealthy to dictate the course of our free society that is run by me. Well, personally, I agree that is. As a leader of the Draylock Council, where money is kind of the way we run things, I don't really agree with that. I believe, yes, we will allow the wealthy to dictate our the course of our actions, because we are wealthy. So, I think... I think we do this. I think we do agree that we will declare war on the Volfar Imperium. Um, if there's one thing we don't need right now, it's civil war. Much better to fight some aliens abroad than our friends at home. We have captured or capitulated to the Warhawks' demands and declared war on the Volfire Imperium. As a result, the Warhawks have paid 500 BC into our treasury to help fund the war effort. Oh, I was kind of hoping that. Shoot, I was kind of hoping that they would give me like 15 turns or something to... Alright, you need to come down here. 15 turns or something to declare war, then they would give me the money, but it looks like that just immediately did that. So, okay, we've explored a place. Small desert with people. Small tundra, ultra poor, tiny asteroids. Let's talk to these people. Welcome, welcome, my friends, to beautiful Sands of Dorne. Your journey here must have been a long one. We, too, once were explorers of the stars, and still many of our people choose to travel far from home. But most of us, most of... Most of choose to stay. Okay, a little typo there. You see, we find it to be mostly too cold in space. Even so, if you wish to trade, we have some opportunities for you. Gain a troop ship with four Dornish mercenaries. Let's see what these mercenaries are made of, shall we? Minus 100 BC, rearm, repair, and refuel this fleet. We have no need of Dornish services personally. Now this is interesting. Because if we gain a troop ship with these mercenaries, we could send them <laughs> to the pirate base. I kind of like that. I kind of like that idea. Buying mercenaries sounds right up our alley. Since, since we're kind of like all about buying other, everything else. So, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, let's do it. There we go. Troop transport. Now, our fuel is going to be a tad limited. So if we send them this way... We could theoretically explore this place and then head back. Yeah, I kind of like that. 
All right, so we're going to do that. Okay, so we need to prepare for this war now, though. Jeez. So Etho, we know, is going to be the big staging point. It's right on the border. Um, we're sending down some ships up here. Down there, it's going to take them a while to get there. Eight turns, jeez. Um, do we have any... What are you building? You're building a spaceport. Okay, I kind of would like a star base. But we know Drelok has a star base. Soil enrichment, orbital habitat, automated factory. Hmm. Here's Etho. Etho is building what? An infantry base. Two turns. Okay. That is good. Automated factory, orbital habitat, fleet academy. Hmm. I kind of... I mean, I like the automated factory, but... I mean, we could rush build it, but we wouldn't be able to rush build our ships, which could be an issue. The Fleet Academy would be really nice. That way our ships coming out would have a plus one level, and we could take the Mandatory Service that also gives plus one level to the ships. So basically we'd be pumping out ships that are Base that are level three, I think, right off the bat, which would be a decent, uh, a decent deal there. Plus, we want to go through this anyways to get to um, Xeno Intelligence Agency, so I think that'll be good. We're gonna finish shields here in four turns. <sighs> hmm. Man, war. It's something that we didn't want. And yet, I feel like the game has forced us into it. Because not only are these guys, we're at war with them because they we possess a world they believe should be theirs, but the same with these guys. If you remember, they wanted a planet within our own home system. So we're going to have to deal with these guys eventually too, which I think is garbage. Uh... I dislike that mechanic. I mean, we can constantly have our spies forcing better relations, but I don't know how high that disapproval goes from us having something that they want. I think it's designed that inevitably you go to war. So, with that in mind, let's see. So we've got Etho. Lothar is building... A star base, 12 turns. I'm going to force build that now. Because we're going to want the command points. We're going to want the command points. Um, I mean, we would just pay extra without the... Com if we have um, too many ships for the command points, which would take out of our, our uh, income here. I mean, but clearly we can support that. So, I don't know what we're doing there. And then drill one. What are you building? Automated factory. Oh, oh, right. This is also going to be one of our things. So, it also has a star base. It would cost quite a bit to build. So, we'll just leave that. Okay, so. Uh, declared war on the Volfar Imperium. Yes, Dang it. Why? Why must you... Why must we fight? Why won't you just let me steal stuff from you and take your money? That's the civilized way to do things. Alright, so we're just going to have to... You can see here this fleet has been waiting for this opportunity. Now, these ships are tiny. If we um, right-click on it, you can look at it, and these ships are just small, gross monstrosities that 
do nothing. So I'm not worried about that. This, I'm not sure. I think this is like our pelican size class. Alright, so they're on their way. Etho, what are you building? An infantry base? Yeah, I really don't want to stop that. Especially how far along it is. So what we may do is rush a, like a pike, after this infantry base is built. In fact, I think that's what we do. We could try to rush like a pelican, but it's going to be expensive. It's like here, it's going to be a thousand. So I think, let's see, a red tail. No, we need something that can actually do some damage. Albatross cruiser. It's also going to be too expensive. Yeah, I think we, we rush maybe a pike or two. Um, because that will give some missile. Maybe a pike and a scythe. There we go. There we go. Let's get out of here. And we'll see what happens. Yep, hostile fleet entering. This has been done. 300 to rush a pike. We have to be kind of careful on how much we spend. Because I don't think we're going to have a ton of trouble with... Left click to scrap. Interesting. I don't think we're going to have a ton of trouble with this fleet. Mainly because our star base is going to be pretty beefy against this fleet. You see, because it's, it's all these tiny little gooblers. And then this one big one. It's got laser cannons, so it's got to come up fairly close. And... Um, it does have some rockets, but our screener should be able to protect against those. And these have some rockets and some lasers. So, I, I don't know. Uh, one turn to get to its destination, or two? Hmm... Hmm, well, let's do it. Let's let's rush this one just in case. We don't want to lose our first engagement. It sets a bad tone for the war. It puts us on our heels. Um, and that's just no good anyway, either way around. We have still have quite a bit of money, but we'll, uh, we'll kind of watch that, keep that. going. Uh, fleet maintenance is zero. Oh, because we're within. So that's interesting. So there is no fleet maintenance as long as you stay within your um, command points. So during a war, you may have quite a bit of fleet maintenance because you're going to be producing tons and tons of ships. But then afterwards, if you, as long as you bring it back down, cut it back down, um, then yeah, you'll be, you should be golden. All right. Scouts have arrived at Tiffus. All right, so they're going to be here next turn. That's fine. We sh we built the pike. Yes, yes. So we've got a decent defense there. Tethys. Medium barren, ultra poor, ancient androids. Gain two android citizens when colonizing this planet. So this planet would be completely max population as soon as you set down there. But it's barren, ultra poor. That's kind of a garbage. What is this? That looks interesting. I have to say, I do like some of this, these crazy things. Like, so there's that. There's these uh, storms and nebulas and weird stuff it, that you can explore. I like that there is a bit of an exploration element to the game, other than just going to the different star systems. All right, so we're going to send you there. And uh, 
Oh. So we're at war with the Volfar Imperium. We're close to being able to put a spy in. However, I think that during the war here, knowing where their ships are is going to be better, shall we say? Uh, hack their sensors. Granting you full vision of their fleet deployments for 25 turns does not require burning a spy. So we can continue to keep our spies. I think this is a good idea. Um, because it'll take us a long time to get the intelligence for it anyways. Although, although, we since we're at war with them, we can do smash and grabs. Your spy will create a one-time opportunity for you to raid an enemy lab with your ground forces. If successful, you will acquire one of their best technologies. You have 25 turns to get ground troops to the coordinates. We just got this ground troop thing. I think, yes, I think we're going to wait so that we can smash and grab some of their tech because oh man we can't we can't see their tech really well yeah we can they hate our face but I don't care I want to see what your tech is yeah so they've got fusion power and plasteel armor both of which I want I kinda want orbital shipyard too so exit yeah so I think uh, what's this Troop transport. Colony ship. Interesting. Uh, this Inalius is weak. Yeah, so we've got this troop transport coming up this way. We can just redirect them when we get... I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. So, we're going to battle. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Alright, fight this. So like I said, those small ships, uh, aside from them being able to put out tons of missiles, I think as long as we've got... Okay, our pike... is going to be here. Let's see. He's almost within range of them. I could probably put him in range to begin with, maybe. Yeah. And I'll kind of focus him on some of the smaller ships. And then we'll have our screener here near him. To kind of protect him from any income incoming missile stuff. Alright, but you I want to start destroying that. Actually you stay here. Oh yeah, look at that. The Pike took out one of them small ships with one missile bat barrage. Yeah, there they go. Those ships are just gone. Okay, our screener. Let's pull him this way. kind of bait him. Uh, 
Oh yeah, it's gone. Boom. So, first war. No freaking <laughs> awesome. So, our star base is level 2. I don't know if it starts that way, but good war good battle. Yeah, those tiny so you saw those tiny little ships just got obliterated. Um So, Ethos should be fairly safe. Defensive shielding protects. Um, oh, so we got class 1 shields. Fantastic. I think that shields could be a big deal here. So what I want to do is take a look at our ships here. Uh, defenses. Yeah, see now we have shields. Those are class 2 shields. But if we go to our pelican... Now look at the ship speed. So tiny. So tiny. Um, I think it's because we have all this super crazy armor on it. I think that requires tons of extra power too. So what I want to do is alter this a bit. I'm going to remove our armor here. <sighs> okay. Yeah, you can see that gives us a lot of power. Maybe remove one of these and give it... Oh, shields are big. Shields are really big. Okay. Let's remove that and that and that and that. So that'll give us a shield. Um, does it say anywhere here where the shield... And look at the power draw. Oh wait, that's just because we just put that up there. Okay. So regular armor without all these these things here don't take up um, energy. So, we need power. See, that's why I wish we had, like, fusion power. Um, efficiency bonuses. Oh. I don't remember seeing a small engineering bay. I just remember this large one. That's interesting. Alright, so we need a power here. Oh, man. We're going to need so much power. Yeah, we are short on power. So, fusion beams. We need the flat cannons. Okay, here's what I think we're going to do. We are going to get rid of this stuff here. We'll put power there solar armor so much more to build um, but it gives lots of power Three, one, yeah. So if needs be, we could put solar armor maybe on the back. That's an interesting idea. Okay. 
or maybe I'll go away. I have an idea. Because this slot right here always seemed kind of bizarre to me, but if we put solar armor panels there, and then we put solar panels on the rear, because look, if they're firing at our rear, we're in trouble. <laughs> and that gives us a fairly decent. What's our ammo? 200 to, to drain. Okay, that's fine. Um, can we put these back on? Maybe. Okay, so we've run out of time, but I want to finish this ship. We would need a power capacitor that is not not ginormous. Yeah, that's still not not enough to put in those fusion cannons. But is it enough for maybe some laser bit laser cannons or? bombs. We could actually use some bombs. It will turn whoever it's dropped upon into mindless raging vomit zombies. In essence, this is a planet killing weapon that allows us to eliminate enemy strongholds without the need for lengthy bombardments or ground invasions. Oh. Oh. Okay guys. Dilemma. Are we above using biological weapons? Are we above that? It costs a lot of extra production cost than, say, nuclear bombs. Tactical, strategical. What are the difference? Uh, they will cause fallout radiation which will impart long-term pollution to a planet. Oh. No. We don't want to do that. So, the, the answer to your question is... Oh, it's too big. Crap. Okay. We may have to build a bomber. Um, okay. So, maybe... Artillery. That fits in there quite nicely. Will that reduced our that. Those have to face forward. Hmm. Guided mini rockets. I wish it told me a range. Firing arc is 90. Like I see 200 here, but I'm not sure what that is. 
this spinal is there that's 500 for the 200 for these turrets six missiles per thing um, or do we just go like with laser cannons the benefit of these little rockets is that uh, the benefit of these little rockets I just lost train of my thought but is that they don't pull any energy but they do pull ordinance and so we and we need ordinance so uh, do those little point defense lasers have no they don't Oh, you can select them as point defense so that they will just intercept fighters and missiles. That's probably why our other ship didn't fire on them. I bet if you... where was that? Laser cannons. Oh, you can't take them off. Never mind. Ah, well. Um... So maybe if we did something like that with some ordnance storage and we're back up to 200. I like it. We could put even more ordnance storage. Although I worry about Oh, uh, we also need power. So maybe we can up the power here. No. I think we just have to we just have to accept that this carrier is not going to be offensive in any form. Um Oh, that's a big, large shield. No wonder it was so huge. We could put smaller shields on. So, 20,700. Is that the shield amount? Holy crap, that's a lot of shielding. Yes. The shield strength added by this module. Shield strength contributes only to the strength of the shields in quadrant where the module is placed i.e. four aft port starboard. However, if you put it in the center, it does the whole ship. This is 8,000. With a power draw of 16. Yeah. Yeah. So that one shield is giving us a lot of shield strength. That's cool. That's really cool. Alright, so... Yeah, we need some, some extra power. We don't need that much power. So if we put in... I kind of want to put this main engineering in somewhere, but... Alas, there is no space. Or is there... So this is going to be out of the way. 20,000 damage. That's a lot of damage. Let's play with this a little bit. Our episode's going to go a little long here because we're playing, we're shipbuilding, and that always takes a little bit. But I really want to. What does this do again? Power consumption of the ship is reduced by 50%. Engine output efficiency can be increased by up to 20%.
So if we put that there, and then maybe we go with smaller shields here and here. Boom. Do that there. Look at the power drain. It's so minimal because we took away like those fusion lasers. But... We could just make this a beast up front. And it's infinite. I actually kind of like that. Because this means that, so we can just kind of point it at front, and the, the front will take the majority of the damage, which is unfortunate because one of our fighter bases is there, although our fighters should be launched at that point. But missiles coming in, anything that the flat cannons don't shoot out, will have to get through all of this armor before it matters. And then we can, like, turn it and cycle it. So, yeah. So, meet the new pelican, guys. Um, I'm going to save this. And hopefully, we can uh, build one of these bad boys, or 12, and get it, get it going. It gives us 16,000 shield strength with these two class 1 shields, small class 1 shields. Um, the engineering reduces the efficiency, or adds efficiency, plus damage control. I'm not sure what the damage control is. Uh, is reduced by up to 50%. For the most, furthermore, engine output efficiency can be increased by up to 20%. Smaller does half of these bonuses. I don't know what the damage control aspect is, but if it has like some kind of self-healing element, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and call that here. We've got a new pelican ready to go. I really want those pelicans to work. Um, I just think we need to build more of them and protect them better. Uh, so, our first engagement with the Volfar went quite well. We basically kicked their trash because their fleet is tiny and worthless. And I look forward to even more destruction in the next episode. So, until then, live free, game hard.